Hello and welcome to Money Money Money, your weekly personal finance date with me, Surabhi Upadhyay. Mutual funds are an integral part of a personal finance plan and there are funds for all our needs from tax saving to retirement planning to even saving for that holiday. Now this week on the show we profile some of the biggest funds of India by size. We break them down in terms of performance. We tell you about the men who manage these funds and of course get you analysis on whether these funds should really be part of your portfolio if they're not already there. Helping me do this mammoth stars this week is Feroz Aziz of Anand Rathi Private Wealth. Feroz, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the show as always. So it's an interesting idea because even when I was thinking, okay, if I, at the top of my head, if I, if I have to name the biggest five funds, it wasn't that clear. So we thought it's a good idea to do some homework and do this exercise. So, um, you know, what has your initial analysis thrown up in terms of uh, some of the biggest uh, funds that are out there? Yeah, I think it's a very good idea, Surabhi, to take up this topic for this, uh, for this uh, segment or the session. Uh, why is it important is there are about 500, 600 odd equity schemes. Now, not all of them will have a clear distribution of assets. There will be some schemes which will have so much more than the rest of them. So we have to give emphasis to where people's money is invested. Absolutely. So point one is that the large schemes seem to have over the last few years underperformed mm -hmm. so is there something to for us to read and then take our strategy according to that conclusion mm -hmm. which you can derive out of inferring uh, from the data which is thrown up mm -hmm. so point one is which throws up is the top three schemes of this country belong to one asset management company yeah. right which is HDFC then you have uh, Aditya Birla's one scheme mm -hmm. and then you have Kotak Mm. Uh, which has another scheme, and then SBI. So yeah. the point one which I'm making is it's important to analyze as per the assets because mm -hmm. the viewers would own them and we need to analyze them being duty-bound to do so. Mm -hmm. Second is that there's a large skew uh, mm -hmm. of these large funds across mm -hmm. one AMC. Oh, absolutely. So, well, uh, that's the slight tweak we've done. We thought we'll give you the top five biggest funds of the country. However, since we realize that the top three of them come in from the same asset management company, that's HDFC Mutual Fund, we decided to throw in a sixth fund. So, in effect, we're looking at six funds today as we get started. The biggest one of them all, the biggest fund, mutual fund, equity mutual fund of India, happens to be HDFC Prudence. We are talking about... And AUM, assets under management of a whopping almost 38,000 crore rupees. That's a lot of money for uh, Mr. Prashant Jain and his team to manage, Firoz. Correct. <laughs> That's the largest scheme. Yeah. One scheme mm. uh, holding 37, 38,000 crores, which mm. is the latest data as per April, is a lot of money. Uh, so point one is that uh, it has large assets mm -hmm. and it's the largest one. Point two, Prashant Jain, who's the CIO himself, manages this from uh, 2003, June. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a long period, almost about 15 odd years of managing one scheme. Then if you go on to dwell deep into it, it is we, it's mutual fund is a wrapper. It's mm -hmm. a name given to a set of stocks. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for a person to own it and also look what is there inside it. Mm -hmm. So there are several things which one should look at. But you rightly highlighted that CIO manages it himself for the last 15 big years. Okay. So let's get started with uh, the Prudence Fund. Um, if you could just run us through some of the details like, you know, its track record and typically the nature of this fund as well. Correct. So first comes the strategy. First, now we have spoken about who manages it. Mm -hmm. So the good part is the CIO manages it himself. Yeah. The second part is the strategy. What is the strategy? We need to spend a, uh, a, a minute on that. One is it invests about 75%, 65 to 75% in equity, mm -hmm. 20 to 30% in debt instruments. So that's why it's called a balanced category, but mm -hmm. it is equity uh, mm -hmm. in nature because its queue is there. And its strategy is to buy businesses in the equity side, which are strong businesses, bottom-up picking. Mm. Bottom-up, which I mean, does the company, if its company is good, then you're not too worried about which sector it belongs to. Sure. That's what is called bottom-up strategy. So it follows a bottom-up strategy. Mm. Uh, it has 80 stocks in it. Uh, 80 stocks is a lot of stocks, right? Then the top 10 stocks actually uh, own about uh, 43%. Mm -hmm. The 10 stocks hold 43% and 25 stocks hold 60% of the money. Mm -hmm. What are those stocks is also good, interesting stuff to analyze. Absolutely. Uh, Infosys is the largest holding with 7.3% mm -hmm. in Infosys. Then you have l &T, then you have SBI and ICICI. These are the top four holdings mm -hmm. of this fund. Mm -hmm. So a large portion of this 37,000 crores, mm -hmm. upwards of 10,000 crores, is held in these four stocks. Mm -hmm. So why is it important to know? So that you can see whether it 
it gels with the thought process of your advisor. Exactly. It's in certain cases, yeah. you might not be in love with financial services. Mm -hmm. But if the fund holds 20%, 30% of its money in financial services, mm -hmm. it's always wise to look deep in mm -hmm. and see if there are some contradictions between what you think, your advisor thinks, and the fund manager thinks. Okay. Now, uh, having said that, return analysis, and what would your advice be on HDFC Prudence? So, return analysis mm -hmm. and risk analysis are mm -hmm. the two other uh, sides of the same coin, which is investment. Months, uh, return has been very poor. Mm. So it has underperformed Nifty by about 6 7%. Uh, if it underperformed by 1 2%, I would be okay because it has debt in its portfolio, point one. Uh, return has been uh, not so good. Anandrati uses a different method of ranking it. Mm -hmm. So in that ranking, it comes in the in not in the top 25% of the schemes in the in the second top second quartile okay. so I would strongly recommend against the scheme okay uh, I know it's the largest scheme mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it will not create as much value as you would want to maybe if you want to switch from HDFC prudence to the HDFC uh, basket itself mm -hmm. then you can go into an HDFC balanced fund which is relatively smaller in size but has the agility and the vigilance being taken care of uh, in that scheme so okay. from a from a one last point from a risk perspective, every fund has the attribute of capturing more upsides and less downsides, but mm -hmm. this scheme on the contrary captures lesser of the upside mm -hmm. and more of the downside. That's why the ah, performance is bad. So there you go. Uh, size could, cannot be everything on its own. There are other parameters that you have to keep in mind and Feroz has outlined some of them. Let's move to the next second biggest Fund of India and this again is from the HDFC universe. We are talking about the HDFC equity fund again managed by uh, Prashant Jain, right? This one? Yeah, this again uh, managed by Prashant Jain. These are okay. both very, very old schemes yeah. and yeah. that's uh, evident in the number of uh, the assets they manage. Point sure. one, the fund manager is Prashant Jain. This mm -hmm. is the largest large cap scheme, mm. uh, so to say, uh, in the category. It has about 21 odd thousand crores mm. uh, as of April uh, mm. and has a skew of close to about 52 stocks uh, in the portfolio, which is relatively lesser than Prudence, which we mm. just saw. 80 was too many, 50, 52 was reasonable and all of them in the large cap category. Mm. Okay, uh, it has four sectors again, mm. uh, which are the larger uh, holdings, which mm. is one is industrials, financial services, utility and technology. Sure. These are the sectors it owns. Mm -hmm. Okay, anytime, why is it important to see when the fund manager is already looking at it is because if there's a dichotomy between your strong opinion mm. or your advisor's strong opinion and the fund managers, if there's a staring yeah. contradiction, then you need to act. Absolutely. That's why I'm mentioning what sectors uh, hold, Absolutely. right? You and know, when I look at the, the stocks, uh, you know, for this fund, uh, again, it has the same names, uh, Infosys, State Bank of India, uh, ICICI Bank. So uh, could that be a bit of a problem here as in Prudence's case? Yes, it would be. Mm -hmm. See, what happens is if you are in one fund house, so what is mm -hmm. the conclusion one could derive is, firstly, being in the, such a large scheme is not a good idea in my opinion. Okay, why, why is that? Why do you say that? Why? Because there is a strong correlation mm -hmm. between underperformance and the size, which, ah. which statistically is thrown up mm -hmm. out of the top 10 schemes we have analyzed for different years okay. and saw that size is becoming a detriment. Okay. And we did a survey amongst fund managers as well mm -hmm. and they very subtly we did this survey because you would want to get the information heartfelt sure. and then most of them said a larger size becomes very difficult to manage and generate value. Okay. So in my opinion large scheme is a bad idea, very large scheme. Mm. Second, large scheme, two large schemes of the same fund house is catastrophic in my opinion. I'm using <laughs> okay. stronger words so that there can be action to the viewers. Sure. Why? Because there is going to be a large intersection because mm. the person is same. You can't have so very... The thought process is the same thing. and chances are his stock selection might be the same. Correct. And you would okay. see intersection of like HDFC prudence and equity. Mm -hmm. I would be surprised if you looked at the intersection analysis, mm -hmm. if the intersection is not more than 50-60% of the AUM. Okay. So you have different names, mm -hmm. but the same underlying. So that's the extent of overlap in terms of the stocks that these two funds are owning, even if they are different funds, you are not getting the benefit of diversification if you are holding both of these in your portfolio. Correct. And if okay. in a year mm -hmm. uh, where financial services have taken a beating, at mm -hmm. least as we stand today, yeah. uh, then you would uh, be hit on both the sides. Sure. So investment diversification is all about complementary products mm -hmm. which do well in different points in time so that your risk comes down. Otherwise, okay. the risk actually compounds instead of deteriorating. So I already have a, a sense of what you might say about this fund in terms of risk reward, should one invest, should, not, should one not invest. But uh, just run us through the view and of course the performance analysis as well. 
Uh, see, uh, like you preempted, I, I would definitely give an exit to HDFC equity. Mm -hmm. Of course, I've been giving an exit to this fund for the last four years. Uh, May 14 is when. Uh, that was, of course, a tough call to take. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, continue to give an exit call uh, on the HDFC equity. Of course, it has a large pedigree and a very, very good fund manager managing it. But I would choose another fund managed by Prashant Jain, but not of this nature. Mm -hmm. And if the capability of the fund manager is stupendous, mm -hmm. giving him mandates of managing large cap schemes is like tying his hands down. So to net net, to summarize, an exit to an HDFC equity as well, unfortunately. Okay, so from Feroz's side, it's a no to the HDFC prudence, it's a no to HDFC equity. You said you would opt for another scheme from the same universe. Which one would that be? Uh, that would be the third largest scheme. Okay. Okay, which has been managed in a different fashion. So mm -hmm. that's HDFC mid-cap opportunities okay. uh, managed by Chirak Setilwad. Okay. Incidentally, that's the third largest scheme and HDFC holds three big schemes. So I, on that note, I'm going to take a break because we've hit our break timing. Uh, that's an interesting note to take a break on. Uh, if you want to know which is the third biggest mutual fund equity scheme in this country and the one that also has Feroz's approval, stay tuned because we're going to be coming back and analyzing this HDFC mid-cap fund on the other side.